Hi guys and welcome to the Awaken Energy, I'm Skeed. During this Kundalini activation energy, this pranic energy, Shakti energy healing, today we're also going to be talking about whilst you receive and connect this energy. So feel it from my hands, connect to my hands. Connect to my whole energy field if you can. I want to talk to you about the darker side of Kundalini. Because you've asked me questions and I've heard some very interesting things. So there is this thing about the darker side of this energy. There are people that will suck your energy and there are people that have sort of evil energy or that will install succubus in you, sort of entities that suck your energy and things like this. Now, first of all, to answer the question, are there people that can draw energy out of you? Yes, there are. How do I know this? Because I can do it. It's a very rare skill. But I know people can do it because I can do it. Now, with this said, is this a bad thing? No, because I use it personally if I'm doing a session with someone and I see they end the session and they're still very, very high, lots of energy. After a session, they might have to go and get in the car and drive. So I will obviously informing the person what I'm going to do and ask them if they want me to do it. I will bring them back down. So drawing their energy, I'll bring them back down to a place where it's safe for them to go and get in the car and drive. So just because people can draw the energy out of you, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It can be a very useful skill. I've also met another person who's helped me with this a couple of times when I've been too high and haven't been able to disconnect. And he has the skill not to draw the energy out of you personally, but he has the skill to connect you to the grounding energy of the earth very, very efficiently. And hence the energy drains out of you that way to bring you back down to a place where it's safe to go and you know, after a session and go about your everyday life without walking around sort of in a high state. I've also met people and received sessions from many people. And now this is where people say, oh, it's an evil energy, it's a dark energy. I'm, I'm not going to judge in that way. I'm not that dualistic in terms of good and evil. But I have received sessions that as soon as I've connected, or they've connected with me because I'm the one receiving, that I just feel their energy is not the same frequency as mine. In fact, it's a very, very different frequency. So as soon as I felt it, I'm just like, oh no, not this. So what I did, I threw up filters or barriers or protections to filter out the levels of energy that didn't fit with mine and just let the ones that filter through. You could ask, so how did, how did I manage to throw up these protections? Well, I also have a knowledge of, I've studied esoteric, Western esoteric magic and things like that. And so I used filters and protections based on like chaos magic. I just threw up and read about them. It's not really the topic of this channel. I just threw up a barrier to stop it. Now the most more, if we're talking about chakras and things, how do we manage to throw these up without having to study chaos magic? You literally just open your heart chakra to the maximum you possibly can. 
and that will create a field and stop anything from attacking you. And of course, as I've mentioned in other videos, breathing through the nose and out the mouth will not let energy, any of these energies stick to you. And then we talk about the darker side and the lighter side. Because a darker energy does not mean a bad or negative or evil energy. I've had sessions that energy has been very dark and I've had energy sessions that have been very light. But the dark energy, it's better to compare this to yin and yang. So yin, the feminine energy, is very light. And yang, the mas masculine energy, is very dark. You could even compare it to Shakti and Shiva, but then that it gets very confusing. But so darker energy can be very powerful and very penetrating, and very healing and positive at the same time. So just because it's dark doesn't mean to say it's bad. And if you look at even the names of dark magic, if you go right to the basics, right to the roots. The word dark comes from Ken, Egyptian magic, or Heka. You may have heard of Hekate. Heka is the magic of Egypt, of the rich, dark soil, but of nutrients and great for the plant. Dark, when we say is bad, is a bad interpretation. Which is very different to energies that will connect with you well and energies that you won't like. And I'm sure there are some people that will connect to my energy. And it may not be at their vibrational frequency. And so, they may not like to receive more sessions from me, and that's fine because we are all on a path. We're all on a journey, we're all at different stages. And this is fine. But to say, if we go into a dualistic way of looking at things, especially of the good and the bad, yes, of course, there's good and bad and everything, so we could say the police are there to protect us and the police are there to keep the peace. But there are also police that will take advantage in certain places, unfortunately, and they'll ask people for bribes so they don't do things. And, you know, there's good and bad, there's positive and negative, sort of in everything if we wish to look at it. And, and that's not even good and bad. I mean, if we look at it from the perspective of police, you have the police that do their job from a non-egotistical point of view. They're there to help, serve and protect. And then there are the police that you know, might ask for these bribes because they're stuck in a low level vibration and they're very egotistical, looking out for themselves. That doesn't inherently make them bad. Unless, of course, you like to see things in a dualistic manner. But they're just levels. They're all levels. And to be able to take this further and go further, as I've said, we have to release the ego. We have to release the dualism. We have to stop looking at things in terms of good and bad. And one example I always love to give people. We say killing is bad. I'm not saying killing is good. But if a lion kills a zebra to live, is it bad? It, it becomes muddled. See what I mean? If a black hole sucks in a planet and wipes out 
the entire population that lives on that planet. Obviously, it destroys the planet. Is the black hole evil? Or is it just part of nature? Now, obviously, I'm taking things to huge extremes, but I'm using the extremes as examples. Because good and bad are just parts of our programming. And basically, bad means not good for me and my ego. Now, obviously, if someone's trying to kill me, I would say they're bad, they're evil because they're trying to kill me. Because it's not good for me. Which obviously makes sense. But again, we're still talking a level of ego. Because death is bad. But then, you know, in a war situation, there's a group of soldiers and one person, one of the soldiers, sacrifices their life to save the others. So in that case, was that death bad or was that death heroic? So it all gets very confusing and muddled as we get higher and it's, it's quite difficult for, to get it, get it through your head. So, I mean, even Sad Guru talks about the darker side and there's evil and but there are lots of people. And it's just, well, that just shows the level of polarity, of duality that he's talking from. I'm not saying that's his personal ideology, he's just putting it into words for people to comprehend. So we have to release these things. And yes, there will be, as I said, energy levels that aren't a good match for you. And just because they're not a good match for you doesn't mean to, seem, mean to say they're evil. Now, this thing of being able to put like succubus or entities into you, does it happen? It can happen. Someone could pass one of their traumas into you. Someone could grow one of your traumas by forcing their energy. And forcing the energy, you can see I'm talking and I'm sending energy. There's no forcing going on here. If I forced my energy, and I had traumas in me that I haven't got rid of. Everybody has traumas to a certain extent. But you know, these things have to be released. So anyone who is doing energy work must work on themselves deeply before they work on you. Because otherwise there is that possibility of things like this that can happen. So you must be responsible. Don't just go and receive a session. You must be responsible. You must talk to the people before they give you the session. You know, you can just ask them about their healing journey. So what was your healing journey like? How did you release your traumas before you started doing this? And just by their responses, you'll be able to tell. So if they're closed off and they don't like to talk about it, well, you've got your answer. So darker, masculine, feminine, yin and yang, not good or bad. So help this little bit of information has helped you become more aware in these energies, just as anything in life. Thank you for today. Namaste.